welcome to Consecrated Bible Study. So the last video I uploaded, I invited you guys to go on a journey with me. And this journey consisted of Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. And this is the first sermon that Jesus gives. And it's probably the most powerful sermon because at the end of it, he said, if we do these things, we will be that house founded upon the rock. And when the winds came, the storms could not blow that house down. And we touched on these winds being trials, temptation, different things in our life that rocks our spiritual life. We touched on that. So if you haven't seen that video, go back and see that video. It is right here. Um, and this is a title right here that it's under and this is the beginning of that journey so we've covered two videos so far day one and day two of the journey and this is day three of the journey and we're going to be looking at matthew chapter 5 verses 5 and this is mind blowing this is a slap in my face but that's what the word does it, it slaps you in your face and it shows you yourself that way you could give that thing to god so Matthew chapter 5 verse 5. This is what it says. Blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. The first question is what does the word meek mean? So I decided to look up what the word means and it means gentleness of spirit. Gentleness of spirit. Interesting the word meek when it was used in the Old Testament were those who wholly relied on God and not their own strength to fight against injustice. What do we mean? Think about it. The Bible says that Moses was one of the meekest men that ever lived. And the interesting thing was, as Moses is taking the children of Israel through the wilderness and they begin to complain, you see this pattern of what Moses does. They're complaining against him and they're like, Moses, because of you, you've brought us out here to die. Even though they've seen all the miracles, they still begin to blame Moses. And you would think Moses would respond in a way to where it's just like, hey, you guys, you guys are so ungrateful. You saw when God passed the Red Sea, you saw him provide waters when there was no waters in the wilderness and you're still complaining, but no, that's not what he does. Every time they would complain, he would go to God and he said, God, you see how messed up these people are. You see how ungrateful these people are. I need your help. And this is beautiful because it's a slap in the face to me because typically when we are faced with adversity from others, from people that are trying to cut you down, people that are trying to attack you and mess up your day, the first instinct is to really defend yourself. I know that with me, that's what it is, especially when you feel like they are not being right. They don't have a reason to come at you like that, but they came at you like that and it's like, why did you come at me like that? Because you see a difference between what Christ wants us to do and what we naturally want to do. So you naturally want to lash out at that person. The flesh says, look man, defend yourself. They, they had no need to come at you like that and that's messed up, defend yourself, right? And this is the way I was, I was kind of growing up too. So it's kind of messed up. It's like, look, when people talk to you a certain way, you got to defend yourself. You got to tell them, you can't, you can't let them walk all over you. You can't do this. You know, and this is stuff that we have been ingrained in myself. And even some of you guys that are watching, but God says, let me fight your battle. You know, stay in character. Come to me with that problem. Lord, this person is really affecting me, Jesus. I need your help. I need your help, Jesus. And in front of them, you act humble. You don't have the last word. And this is so hard. This is so hard for me. This is a slap in my face because it's like, wow, this is what I was talking about. Like, man, sometimes the word just really slaps you in your face when you decide to, to go deeper in it because it reveals areas in your life that God needs to work on. And this is an area that I know that I need to work on because when people do you wrong, when people do wrong things to you, you want to naturally defend self. But Christ says, look, be meek. Blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. This is a characteristic of the righteous. This is something we could implement today. Whether you're at school and somebody is making you upset, the professor is making you upset, whether you're at work and somebody comes at you wrong and you want to defend self, wherever you are, 
guess what? This is something that you can practice. This is something I need to practice. When you're in this predicament, because you know God, because you know God's character, because you've been spending time with God, right? You've been waking up early and spending time with God. You know that he's allowing these things to happen. And he's always going to allow these things to happen. Why? To build your character. To show you that, man, Javed, guess what? You need to work on this thing. You need to learn to start bringing problems to me and not defend yourself. Right? Because at the end of the day, what God is doing is he's reforming your character. He's, he's taking out those nasty things in your heart. You see, the world teaches us to lash out. But God teaches us to be humble. God teaches us to be meek. God teaches us to be silent. Even when we don't, it doesn't make sense for us to be silent. But this is a character of Jesus Christ. He was meek. When they brought Jesus before the high priest after he was betrayed, guess what? The accusations were false. But Jesus didn't say, look, man, you know, God's father sent all these angels to, to destroy these people. He didn't say that. He, he, when you read those scenes, he was so meek. He was so humble. He was so humble. Some of the, half the time, he didn't even say nothing to the responses. And we are striving to be like Christ. But the interesting thing with this is it is almost impossible to be meek without the spirit of God working on our hearts. What do I mean by that? Meekness is a fruit of the spirit found in Galatians chapter five. Let's go there. And just to get context, let's start from verse 22. But the fruits of the spirit, it is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness. There's our word meekness. Meekness is a fruit of the spirit. And how do we attain the fruits of the spirit? The only way to attain the fruits of the spirit is by daily Daily abiding in Christ, daily consecrating our lives to Christ. Did you spend time with Jesus this morning? Did you spend time with Jesus yesterday? How often are you spending time with Jesus? The only way to emulate Jesus's character is by spending time in his word through prayer and through sharing his word. Because as we share the word, like I'm doing right now, it's actually, it grows your spiritual walk. And this is why I like these things because not only is it a blessing to you guys, but it's a blessing to me. But the only way we are going to become meek is Christ working through us, Christ working through our hearts as we spend more time with him and as we give those things to Christ. And let me say, meekness, even though it does not come naturally, when we are wholly committed, surrendered to Christ, when we are waking up early and abiding in Christ, spending time in his word, spending time in mourning, evening, well, morning, noon, and evening prayer, guess what? Meekness is something that's going to automate. It, it should be a natural thing because God is changing the heart, but it's a daily thing. And if you're someone that you have, you have, you're thinking about a particular situation where you're like, man, I wasn't meek there. Ask yourself, were you spending time with Jesus? Were you abiding in Christ at that moment or even prior to the moment? Because typically when we're not abiding in Christ, this is when the enemy comes and he attacks you through people. He attacks you through different situation and the flesh responds, not the spirit. The flesh responds. And when the flesh responds, it is not like Christ. And trust me, I know this. And this is why I love this. Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. Brothers and sisters, like, if this is something you struggle with, which I struggle with as well, right? Let's bring this thing to God. Let's get this under subjection. Let's ask Jesus to take, give us meekness. And when we do ask for this, you better believe that he's going to put you in positions to where people are going to really get under your skin, to where situations are really going to get to you, to where things that you can't control affects you. And you could either react in the way of the flesh, which is defending self. Or you could say, look, man, I'm going to take this thing to God. 
I'm going to take this thing to God. Lord, this person is affecting me. Lord, this situation is affecting me. Jesus, help me with this. Because this is wholly relying on Jesus Christ. Not on our own strength. Not on our own, but totally relying on Jesus Christ. And as we rely on Jesus Christ, He takes us to the next level. He carves out just another beautiful side of His character in us. So brothers and sisters, let us strive to be meek. If this video was a blessing to you, I want you to share it. Because there's many people that are going through things like these and they need this word in season and it can be a blessing to them. Join us in day four where we're gonna be looking at Matthew chapter five, verse six. God bless, this is Consecrated. And again, I'm your host, Java Johnson. <music>